engage in is the war between my higher self and my lower self. And is the only person, I, I am the only person I am allowed to rule over with rigor. I am not allowed to be in charge of you, you are not allowed to be in charge of me, and that's the teachings of Christ. And when I overcome myself, then I can look into the world and see evil everywhere. And by that I mean I can see them who have not overcome themselves. And they don't see the evil in themselves, they see it in others. Right. And by going out to fight what they perceive to be evil in others, they don't realize that they're fighting God. Because the scripture says, I am the Lord. I kill, I make alive, I create good, I create evil, I the Lord do all these things. There's only one God. And if there was two gods, then we'd have a God of good and a God so, of evil. So there's only you, one God. So do you think if Bush went, goes on the uh, retaliate, do you think those people are going to turn back against us here? Against us or against Bush? Bush? Against Bush. Yes. God is calling Bush into a trap. God is rising up in all of the powers of the East. So he's going to make them in the yeah. world. God is huh? gonna make them in the world. Yes, God He's is calling the God is calling the Allied forces right, right into the heart right, of the right. dragon. Oh, right. He's right. In the Middle East. Satan so they 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 don't the 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 go there. Satan is Everybody's that which convinces Everybody. us that into the world. God's gonna raise up and judge the evil in the world. That no, Satan is that spirit in us that makes us believe that God is not responsible for evil, and therefore induces us to go out and fight him. See, Satan is that spirit of darkness that dwells in us. And that's why we must defeat that darkness. That's why we must allow the light to be born in us. Because when the light is born in us, then we are able to see God in the Son of God. Yeah, the, the scripture says that God is fierce. God, in the last days, the scripture says, Isaiah 66, and this is what is unfolding right here, right before our very eyes. It says here, we're going to get into the trap. Please, the trap is sitting up the stage. Yes. Can I see the question? Yeah. Sure. In, your, in your expertise in studying this all over the years, do you find that possible that there are there are people within inside the United States government that are also having the same conversation that we're having here Absolutely. right now? God's, and it may possibly God's change. Sons and daughters are everywhere. Absolutely. There's no that's why we're not to judge any other person. We just know everyone by their foot. Doesn't most people so, know got a basic idea this? Well no, some people are in absolute darkness. And so they're laboring in the darkness, and that's why the scripture says that we should have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reproof. But there are people in the government who are struggling with their conscience about it. Right, right. And those are good people. Are, yes, absolutely. Right. They don't just, want to go in that them. system, and just as we all are, there's none of us that have not in some way but entangled in this system. Isn't that why Bush is taking it slowly, getting everything together? He don't want to go all the way. He just wants to get this guy out of there, and that's it. Well, if he can. Bush, also, if he can. If, well, that, if he can, he just yeah. wants to get the guy himself well, out. Bush, you, did you ever see George Bush make a, a, a speech? Yeah, he and did you ever see that everything. when he starts Stutter. boasting, all of a sudden that psychological little Freudian grin appears in his face? Yeah. George Bush knows in his psyche that he is not equal to this job. He knows that he is here and he's a puppet on strings. And his psyche Absolutely. gives it away every time he makes one of these in his demeanor, in his war, sure. in that... But he's got to do what he's got to do. Yes. Also, let me ask you this. Know, knowing that this has already happened, and it's just come back around again, yes. and God, what you're saying, is within all of us, yes. and we have... And, and, and even God has George created. Bush. God has created this. Yes. Isn't it also possible that the second time around, you learn and you grow from your mistakes, we and should it's be possible back. that this, what may be Nostradamus, or whether we're thinking that it's the end of the world, maybe it's... The opposite. It is the beginning. Did you ever see the movie The Dark Crystal? And it's it's the the little old so what I'm saying is maybe the destruction will not come like it did the first time. Well, no, maybe we, the saw, second. we saw this. The scripture says. But here. not get worse, what I'm Look saying. Look what it says. We don't behold, know. But behold, know. the Lord will come with fire we and with his chariots like a whirlwind <laughs> to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst. Well, this tree is the Antichrist. And that's why you're commanded to know every tree by its fruits. But it also says, a voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple. Well, what is the temple of God? This is the temple of God. 
God doesn't dwell in a house made with st stones and hands. God dwells in the heart of every living being. So a voice from the, of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemy. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Well, 2,000 years ago, our Divine Mother brought forth a child who was that age. We are now come to the end of this age where she's now bringing forth another child. That's what Revelation 12 says. It says, Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb? saith thy God. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her. Well, it doesn't mean that Jerusalem over there where Jews and Arabs are killing each other. It's talking about the higher Jerusalem, the city above, the mother of us all. And this is where the Divine Mother is now descending to us. And she's... I'm sorry, I'm just wondering where, where uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Taoism and the rest of the planet fits oh, in. Oh, absolutely. Well, look, when you study the Tree of Life, this is the universal world tree. You see that the Tree of Life has a eastern, a western dimension to it, but it also has an eastern dimension to it. Could you speak a little to the eastern dimension? Well, yes. Well, we can. If you if you study the Vedas, you realize that the Vedas are the result of the teachings of Adam that went out into the world four and five thousand years ago. The Vedas are the oldest written text organized religion. <clears throat> the Vedas, by studying the Vedas, we come up with the composite figure of Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva fits exactly on to the structure of the tree of life. Now, if you see, this is the mind of Brahma, right here, the mind of the Creator. You see these two arms? These two arms fit on the tree of life right here at the time of Aaron and Moses. When Aaron and Moses came, they were students of the Eastern tradition. They looked into the Vedas and they saw that in the Vedas the creator was Brahma and he had a divine consort, the goddess Sarasvati, the goddess of wisdom. So Moses just simply changes the words around, puts them in Hebrew form and gives us Abraham and Sarah. And so from Abraham and Sarah, the teachings of the Veda pass now into a Western state of consciousness. So we are then, so we are then transformed from, we are then in our origins from the East as no, well. We are Indian and Hindu and, and... We are that, but the mystery is, is that the teachings of the Vedas originate in the West. They originate right here in the... Geography, does it matter whether it was geography? Well, because it has to do with coming to the feet of the mystery. It has to come to do with coming to the lotus feet of Vishnu. It's here in the West that the lotus of divine understanding is open. And that's why God has brought Christians, Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, individuals from every race of humankind and every religious tradition here in the West and then given us the time and relative uh, peace to learn from each other, to learn to reverence each other, to accept the wisdom of God. Beautiful, I agree with it, everything it, you're saying. I'm just wondering whether you could also quote from the Vedas and the Upanishads and maybe from the Torah and the Torah and other books, other holy books as well, so we can we can get a balanced picture of Well, I could take them out, I have the It would be so interesting because we're more familiar with this than we are with the others. And maybe this is exactly what we need in this Okay, but what is what's happening more familiarity is that familiarity with our other brothers in this planet. Yes. All right. Uh, and I agree with you. And so it would be a matter of going into the box and taking them to the box. But what we might just simply understand that here in the West we cannot understand the Judeo Christian principle unless we understand the Vedas. Unless we understand that the Buddha, Gautama, 500 years before Christ, sat right here in the Eastern dimensions of this great mystery. The scripture says that Buddha went to the southern part of the tree. He looked at the tree and he sat down and the world fell out of balance. And so then he went to the west and he sat down and the world tipped out of balance. And then he went to the north and the world fell out of balance. 
And then he went and sat on the eastern side of the tree, turned his back to the west, sat down at the root of the tree of enlightenment, the bow tree, and began to contemplate and receive the wisdom of the universe. Those teachings, those things that are subjective and hidden in the state of eastern consciousness are revealed and objective in the west. And so here in the west, the Buddha taught annihilation. They asked the Buddha, well, what is that? He said, there is nothing after it, but there is not nothing after it. That is not important. What is important is annihilation, cessation of suffering. And when those teachings of annihilation find their meaning in the West, we find the West is a god. Uh, uh, suspended on the limbs of the cosmic world tree in the teachings of Buddhism, giving meaning to self-annihilation. We must destroy ourselves, we must crucify our old nature. But when we do that, when we bring ourselves to a state of nothingness, all of a sudden, the kingdom of God opens up and we see the higher worlds. We see the divine presence of God in the sum of all invisible reality. And so that's the importance of the Western revelation. revelation. But, as you say... Don't we need them again? Don't we need to, don't we need to go back? Yes, and we are going back. The circle return, return, return to, to, to connect to our yes. brothers and sisters. Absolutely, because in the night of this age, all things return to Him who is the Creator. All things return to Vishnu, my, my spirit. So we are now returning to the center. And by returning to the center, we not only find ourselves returning to the center of the mysteries that were hidden here in the western ends of the earth, such as this here. You see this Western mystery? This is this. And in the center of this mystery, right there, is the hidden city. The hidden city of Jerusalem that was... The mystery of this city was committed to the Buddhist, the Banpo Buddhist at the time of Christ. Thank you so much. Okay, bless you. Pleasure meeting you. I see you all at the table. Yeah, I, did you have a, you have a card? We have a card. Yeah, we have yeah, a card. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank and they put this marvelous means of communications in our hands. Because... Uh, see, Mikhail Gorbachev, Mikhail Gorbachev, when he came to power in Russia in the 1980s, he realized, because of his travels here in the West, that only in the West could the true socialist revolution, the true spiritual revolution took place. Mikhail Gorbachev tried to ease the restrictions on the Russian people so to give them space to adopt Western consciousness. He didn't want the Soviet system to collapse, but it did. He knew that it was only in the West that the true spiritual revolution could take place because it's here where we have the abundance of talent, the abundance of skill, deep, deep, sense of the meaning of God's presence in all of their Michael, manifold. Sorry, could you just expand on that? So here we have the abundance of talent and skill. What kinds of talent and skill? And, and then I have a second question, and then I will lose certain time. What we have here, the second question was, because do you consider yourself a Christian? Would you consider yourself a Muslim? Or yes, I consider myself a Christian. There is only one true religion, and that is the religion God has created. Is that, is that Christianity too? Well, no, I grew up in a Christian tradition. But as soon as I understood and matured in my faith, I realized that to be a true Christian, you must be a true Muslim. And that to be a true Muslim, you must be a true Jew. And you must be a true Buddhist. And you must be a true Muslim. And you are a sage. We're lucky to be here. No, I am lucky to be in your presence. Because it takes one to know one. <laughs> and, uh, and so there is only one true religion. That's the one that God has created. And that's the religion of love. And there is only one true race in the world, and that's the human race. And God has just created this illusion of differences so that the spiritual mind coming to perfection can overcome the illusions. And that's simply what we're doing. If you can't overcome the illusions, you're stuck in the elements of this world and you cannot get to the highest Yeah, what can anyone add to that?
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just make Thank sure, you, just make sure that we resist this system. We do not get caught in the intrigues of war as these things unfold. We are coming to the end, which also is coming to the beginning. Let's make sure we're at the beginning. What does the term sage mean? Sage. Uh, well, uh, sage just means old and decrepit. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have these to remember? <laughs> yeah, sage is a word that people don't know, but it, it means somebody who loses it. Okay. So, uh, but some people are sages at that age. The only thing they lack is experience, which they will gather as they grow old. I mean, you know, you the children, right? you see that they're almost sages, you know, you know that they can become sages. So a sage? Without but, being, um, without being, a sage is one who, who is beyond tunnel vision. Well, you know, the Jews over in Brooklyn, they have their old age home. And their old mothers and fathers are, and they call it the house of sages. Okay. See, so it means old wise ones. And so a sage is sort of like the male side of an old crone. A crone is an old mother who has come to full maturity of years and she's wise in the ways of the earth. She's wise in the ways of the magic of the heart. And we all know these problems. They're, they're everywhere. We have them in our lives and these old wise mother sisters. Well, a sage is sort of like a male, one of those. So, uh, and, and everyone is a sage who realizes what the true religion is. The love fulfills all of this. There are people who absolutely do not know how to read. People who do not know anything about the intellectual pursuits of humankind. But they have overcome the world just through the gift they love themselves. And we have met people, I've heard of people like that. People who don't have books or studies, but we know that they are full of love, they are full of gentleness. Well, this fulfills all of this. Love fulfills all of it. It, makes, it doesn't make a difference if you know any of this if you don't have love. If you don't have love and you understand this, all you are is just a, a, a noisy bell, a chiming symbol. What you're doing is just making noise in the world. But until the mind is connected to the heart, and until the heart and the mind are connected to the mind of God, then the better you lose how much you know. Michael, do you meditate? Well, uh, all the time. <laughs> living, living I'm meditating right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the presence of God. No, but I know. But you're very, you're, you're very aware of uh, like just history. Right? I mean, you study Buddha, and you study Jesus, and everything. And I mean, to know you're like the halo and the light. The I do my best studying and meditating with my grandchildren. tied together and all I'm doing is reminding everyone of what they already know. We already know this and we're just quickening in us to understand it. So, so, wow. so do you think there'll be more chaotic stuff that happen soon? Yes. Well, I'm glad I didn't knock my nose on it. Because it's the kingdom of Antichrist that God has created. See, when the gospel was sown into the heart in 2000 years ago, they came to the master and they said, Lord, didn't you sow good seed in the field? And he said, yes. He said, well, now how come the tares are growing up with the world? How come the injustice is growing up in the the killing that's growing up in the Perfect state of mind. Because when he completes the Hajj, he will no longer be tempted by someone who is not his own wife and not his own mother. But don't the women study the Hajj? Uh, yes, they do. But they are 
but they are under subjection and therefore, you know, once you are under subservience, it's very hard to free yourself. It's very hard to break the shackles. Even if you have the word there before you? When you are in the midst of a culture that punishes anyone who tries to liberate itself, it is a very daring thing for a woman, especially in Islamic culture, to step out and say, no, I'm not subject to your rules because you will suffer much retribution in that system. In some Islamic nations, women are free to express themselves. In many of the more fundamentalist nations, they are not free. But here's the meaning of the mystery. The Apostle Paul said, and this is the beginning of Christianity, he said, I command the woman to be silent. Now, what do we think of that? He, who is the founder of Christianity, commands the woman to be silent. Ah, but this is a great mystery. The Apostle Paul, when he commands the woman to be silent, he doesn't command the female to be silent. He commands the woman to be silent. Now, the Quran is taken from that teaching. Now, listen what Paul says. To the Apostle Paul, he knows the mystery of the feminine side of the tree of life. Now, the Apostle Paul says that we speak wisdom to them that are perfect but yet the hidden wisdom. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom. Now who is wisdom? Wisdom is the feminine side of God. The Divine Mother is Sophia. She is wisdom. And so it is wisdom herself that has created this dilemma. So, it says that the wisdom of God, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Now, the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians says, until you come in the unity of the faith. See, this is the mystery. Now, it says here, till we come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now Paul says that until we come to the knowledge of these things, we're still left in darkness. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind and doctrine. Now, Paul is saying that we must come to the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Well, who is a perfect man? Well, the perfect man is not a male person. And neither is Christ a male person. Christ is the mystery of God's presence, not only to humanity, but in humanity. Christ is both a male and a female in perfect balance. And that's why Paul is quoting from here. He says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. She's not Eve. This is not, this is not Adam and Eve. This is Adam and Adam. She is Christ. He is Christ. And so when the scripture says to us that God is going to send us a king, a redeemer, and the name is David, David. David is not the name of a male person. David is the name of a principle of balance, Dalet Bo Dalet. And it's the balance of the male and the feminine principle on the tree of life. And so what is coming is the answer to that great dilemma and the misinterpretation we have of the meaning of the word woman. It does not mean female, even though Muslims interpret it that way and suppress their women even though Christians don't allow women to preach in their pulpits because Paul said, I command the woman to be silent. Well, who's he commanding to be silent? Not the female. He's commanding the preachers, the pastors. And anybody who doesn't understand that the word female and the word woman do not mean the same thing. And so, so what he's saying is that I command the woman to be silent for she shall be saved in childbirth. Well, who is the woman? Well, in Ephesians 5.31, Paul says, Now this is a great mystery, but when I speak of Adam and Eve, 
I mean Christ. Christ is the male and the female. Wherever a male and female are joined together in harmony, there is Christ. Christ is not present in the male or the female alone, only when the two agree, there is Christ. And now, who is Eve? Well, Eve, Paul says, is the church. So, in the beginning, God, who is mother and father, revealed themselves, not to one person, but to one couple, revealed themselves to a male and a female, and they became the new man. Because the man does not mean male. The man means those who have come to a higher state of consciousness. So just as the man sows the seed into a female, the man in the spiritual sense sows the seed of, of higher understanding into those who are listening to them. So Adam, who was a male and a female, who received the revelation of the unity of God's presence in the beginning of this epic, they went out together sowing the seed of understanding into the hearts of others. As others listened to them, the others became their church and therefore metaphorically the woman in the relationship. She was the man, he was the man, and they were sowing a seed of understanding into the minds of others who then became metaphorically the woman. So Paul says, I command the woman to be silent, but he doesn't mean the female. I command everybody who is just receiving understanding but has not come to perfection. Because if you don't understand that Christ is both male and female, then you're a woman. Whether you're male or female, it makes no difference. And that's who he commands to be silent. So, those who have stumbled over that metaphor, who take the scriptures literally as Christians do, as Jews do, and as Muslims do, have come to a state of mind where females are oppressed. And only males have the right to speak. Only males can come to power. That is why the Divine Mother is now descending to us. That's why we are blowing the trumpet in the new moon. And this is why... This is why... You see, when the sun came to power 2,000 years ago, the male principle came to power. When it did, the mother went into hiding. She went into occultation and she took her mysteries with her. Well, why did she do that? Because she is wisdom. And she has now allowed the mystery of iniquity to unfold. And we see that the world is completely out of balance because males are ruling the earth. But now it says, and there appeared in heaven a great wonder, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Well, she has clothed herself in the garments of this mystery. She is now descending to us. And it says here, and she that's has the, the ascension. Huh? That's not a descending, that's an ascension. Well, we will ascend to meet her as she that's, descends that's to meet us. That's the Lady of Assumption on August 15th. Well, that's the Catholic interpretation. We're right. transcending that. And that's what it is. Okay, but we're, we're talking about... What are we talking about? are you talking about? I'm talking about the Judaic interpretation of the Shekinah. The Shekinah is the Divine Mother who descends to us no, to bring forth our children. the original Bible is the Holy Catholic Bible, and you're incorrect. Okay. And before I heard you say that, Jimmy Carter was Satan. Didn't you say no, that? No, he said he was an Antichrist. He was an Antichrist. Does anybody believe that Jimmy Carter was an Antichrist here? Raise your hand. Two people out of a hundred. People are not going to be intimidated. People are not going to be intimidated. No, Listen. We had a world trade bombing here. We don't need to you for you to alarm people. Yeah, we need to respect people yeah, yeah. and their ideas and their no, ideals. No, this is about yeah. a bombing, not about no, religion. Yeah. Has to, this, and he's not talking about. Are you religion. my Are you my sister? I'm your sister in God. That's and, right. Okay. Now the one religion. Has a right to their ideas but and this their is, ideas. This is, Open your, this you is getting hear. people very nervous. It's not it's no, getting you nervous because you've had too much to drink. You're nervous. You're nervous. No, you're, you're, you're with him. You're with him. So you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding You're going to get all these people. We're here to learn. You're studying with him. 
I did. That's right. And Tell that's the truth. Freedom. That's our You're freedom. all together on with him. <laughs> With Carter no, as the anti devil. It's incorrect. You know what happened? It's incorrect. In the 1960s. You know what? I want to listen to what he's saying. You, I want to listen to what he's saying. How in the 1960s. Barging and trying to interrupt. You want to listen to what he's saying yeah, what yes, because, because you want people we, to listen to him. Because we want. Because what I say gets you a little nervous no, because no, I disagree. No, 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 You're alcoholic. Now it's about drinking. You're full of it. I You're all your full alcohol. of it. You yeah, had a couple of things. No. It doesn't mean, but am I acting like I'm making sense? No! no. no. Claude is the no. 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 Antichrist. No, appreciate you're with his him. Ideas. No, I'm not with appreciate him. his ideas. No, yes, we all have you're a with right him. to think Are you and following him? No, I met him last night. And, and, you're, and you're going with this. This is not a cult. It's a, not in a cult. My heart You said open. the word cult. I didn't. But this Who's is what you're doing. <laughs> you're kidding me. You're Look, kidding me. open your mind. And just know, listen. My mind is completely open. No, I don't think so. Because you're, the only you're, you're in on it. You're in on it, and I'm you're gonna and, 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 and these people are going. It, it's all about religion now. It's not all about religion. It's not it's about, about that now. Religion. It's about people it's, who are dead. It's about well, what about, exactly what about all of us are going to be dead one day. And now what? It's about people who are trying to find themselves. It's uh -huh. about people. No, it ain't trying. about people trying to find well, themselves. Of it's about people trying to find the people like under bed. the buildings right now. Well, of course. Please don't scream at us. At us. At us. Do you notice he said the word at us? Did anybody hear that? You know, you know what happened in the 1960s during the anti-war and civil rights movement? The government and religious institutions sent provocateurs into the meetings and they tried to incite the vision and disharmony among the group. This man, I love you, but you're a provocateur. And you try to believe to, that. Of course, yeah. I can see it. Because I'm against what you're saying. I'm a provocateur. Everyone, yes, you right? are a provocateur. Because until you hear now it's it's no, it's, 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 a, it's listen, everybody's listen, going against me. Criticize. No, we're not going against you. What we're you're saying to you is before you screaming at us. You're screaming at us. You got a video. You're screaming at us. Before you criticize, it's all garbage what you're saying. And I'm sorry. And you're well, laughing. Well, let us believe you that. You know what you remind me of? It will fall on its own. You know what you remind me of? Somebody who's in prison true. right now yes, that sir. went away in jail in 1969. Who can figure who that was? That's, <laughs> That's right. How did you know who I was talking about? You're like Charles Manson. You're a student of what? Of what? Of our times. Of our times. You're a liar. And you're a troublemaker. And all say? of your people are provoking something that's not right. When is everybody going to understand? It's not about black, Italian, Irish, Spanish. It's about life. It's We're all one. That's what he's We're all brothers and sisters. But that's why. You just, you just repeated everything he's been saying. No, this is not about that. Because you haven't listened. No, this is not about no, that. Because you haven't listened. Because you haven't listened. Because you haven't listened. I didn't know. Like, Carter, been but been he's listening. not an antichrist. You Do you believe he's the do devil? Do you know what an antichrist? We're all, we all have the potential to be a devil when we do wrong. People, I'm not a devil. I'm, if you I do wrong, you're a devil. I choose to be good. Okay, but if you choose to be bad, don't blame you me what you evil. do. We're all blaming the devil. Did the devil blow up the building? No. no. That's right. Well, that's what we're saying. Right. So don't blame the devil on everything or Antichrist people or anything. What you're saying is out of your mind. Okay. Uh, you know Thank what? You. Let us believe that. Okay. Let us, again, okay. us. The people here, us. Are we with each other? Us, you can join us. Yeah. I will never I join that. Yeah. 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 Come on. Go ahead. We're going to hear you. I'm going to listen to you attentively. You're not talking to a dummy with me. You're not talking. Just don't interrupt. I promise not to talk. You promise to let That sounds like somebody who wants me to shut up. I heard <laughs> last night screaming like this too with somebody listen, else. Listen, listen. I'm going to. Oh, I'm going to. Okay. Right. We'll listen together. The ang is angry. <laughs> Don't be nervous. She sounds like she's nervous. <laughs> she's nervous. Yeah. Well, listen together. I'm a leader. You know why I'm a leader? Why are you a leader? Because I love all of you. And we love hey. you. No, not with this talk, you know. <laughs> It's all look. He's it's laughing. An look idea. at him. It's an Somebody, idea. look at him. What are you it's chewing on, Tom? It's an idea. Every Busted. great thought Funny. comes. 
Everything comes from you. Is that how you get your sauce? Go ahead. He hasn't had a chance to eat because people have been stopping here all day long asking him questions. He does not force or impose his thoughts on other people. They come know, by asking questions, he answers. If nobody paid attention to him, he would take his board and go home. But I don't see a crowd around any other person in this whole entire yes. park. <laughs> This man is speaking the truth. If you choose not to see that, then you can go Jesus was the only him. one that spoke the truth on this planet. Uh, there's, two different, there's two different... We're entering into a new age, a new enlightenment, the beginning of the end, the circle, the completion. We're oscillating like this. We're coming to the same Where did point. you learn that from? <laughs> it's right here. It's right here? Yes, it's two And this is going to be the light? This yes. is going to be it? Yes. Yeah. Right, no, like you're going to get a big following. <laughs> because you believe Go ahead, one, go ahead. Listen to him. Listen to the master. Right. Let's listen. Not the master, the servant. <laughs> servant. Let's listen to the servant. servant. Scripture says it's called no man master. No man master. Go ahead. And I'm listening right. to you. Okay. Attentively. And look. All right. Where's listen your Bible? And accept it. Right. Accept it? Accept it. Are you kidding me? I'll go on from. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You agree? What does that mean to you? Those whose hearts are knit to the poor are poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor, and theirs is the kingdom of heaven, but blessed are those who are not necessarily poor in wealth, but poor in spirit, which means that their heart you is got one it. with the poor. Okay. You got my attention. <laughs> Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Are we all mourning here, the events that happened? Yes. Every one of us are mourning. There is no doubt about that. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek means that we do not seek to rule over other individuals. We put on humility. Unto this man will I look, him that is humble and of a contrite heart. That's what we're talking about, contrition, repentance. This is the day of atonement. It says here, blessed are they who do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Most of the people here are hungering for economic and social righteousness, for justice to reign in the land, not where the rich rule over the poor, not where the powerful rule over the meek, where there is equality and justice. We hunger and thirst for that. That's what we're talking about. Blessed are they which are merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. The merciful are those who do not want to see punishment and retribution, but constantly expressing mercy to all other individuals. <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. George Bush, I hate to say it. Which one? Which is, George? Uh -huh. <laughs> Neither are peacemakers. The president now? Yeah. And no. the other. Neither are peacemakers. Neither is Jimmy Carter a peacemaker, even though he says that he is. But who voted for them? Not, not me. But not me. you, but no. most of the people exactly. have elected them. Exactly. Okay. That's why most Go of ahead. the people are walking in darkness. And darkness? Who's we walking in darkness? All of us. And we have to wake each other up to the realities that are unfolding. It's an awakening that is happening. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Blessed Thank you. are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. You know who that is? Because I love you, I feel persecuted. And so, blessed am I when you persecute me. But it's okay. I don't mind because I forgive you for that. And it says, blessed are the persecuted for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are the when men shall revile you. Blessed am I, because you're reviling me. If I were reviling you, blessed are you. Blessed are then when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. I'm very glad when you do that to me, because it proves that I am close to the truth. Because if I was not close to the truth, neither would these individuals be standing here and neither would you be reviling me, because I would be no threat. So this is what we're doing. Do you think yeah. I'm a threat to you? No, you're not really. Okay, not really. so let's get that clear. Okay, we're clear. I'm not a threat no, to you at all. No, he doesn't mean a threat as a Let him talk. I don't want to hear from you. You <laughs> I don't want to hear. Him I want to hear from. What I see. Be nice to her. Okay, I love her. <laughs> what I see is a brother in the making. And then sometimes, you know, those things take time and we have to work out these family matters. To work a lot out. Of yeah, we're surely going to work this out. <laughs> You're going to. Go ahead. Right. So, anyway. I'm listening. So anyway, Go ahead. Let's what we're doing. The theory. 
it, it, it's not a theory. What we're doing is discussing the reason why we have When's understand. your birthday? My birthday is in May. May what? May the 8th. So what does that have to do with the whole scope thing? Nothing to do with it. <laughs> Nothing this, to do with it. You got the horoscope. Here. Yes. And it has to do with understanding the signs of our times. So what understanding is, the mystery of Christ. So Mark was, you're, 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 you're headed towards Mark. What does that mean? No. These four symbols of the heavens heavens. are representative of the four living creatures in the book of Revelation that represent the four The Revelations, which was a dream. A dream of John the Apostle. Yeah, so what are you saying? The dream is real. Exactly, the dream is real. Everybody's dreams are real. And that's why we're commanded to wake up. We're living in the American dream. We're living in the American dream. And in order to understand, we have to come to an awakened state of consciousness. And that's what the events are this week. It is brought by God to awaken us to understand what is unfolding in the world. What about us. World War One, World War Two, exactly. the Gulf War? All of these things, as we as Christians, we are not allowed to partake in the war. If anyone says we're not allowed to take a war, we're not allowed to kill a human being. We are not allowed. What, to what does it say? We're not allowed to kill. What does Christ it say that? teaches that in a thousand places. What does the commandment say? Thou shalt not kill. No, it doesn't say that. It, it doesn't, right? No, it doesn't. It says, thou shalt not murder. Uh, There's a difference. No, yeah. no, no, don't give me it this. It was changed to murder. No, it was a change. It was, okay. thou shalt not murder. If somebody comes in your house and tries to harm you, you can kill you them. Speak? No, 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 don't defend your it's buddy. Okay. It's okay. Listen to me. You've listened to him all your life. Listen to someone who knows this book inside right. out. Okay. Thou shalt not murder. Okay, hold this is why we can't have peace. Thou shalt not kill. No, no, we, we, this guy, he's making a point about things that have nothing to do with happening with Look here. Look here. Thou shalt not kill. No, it's murder. It says the original. Kill. Original That's words of word. murder. Is it the kill and murder are two different words? Individuals who are trying to rationalize. Do you realize that kill and murder are two different sure words? What's the difference? You the tell you that you tell you this somehow rationalizing themselves that they had justification for protecting themselves and for killing human beings. If I come to your house tonight and I try to harm you and you kill me, you is cannot, that murder? You cannot come to my house to kill me unless God sent you. Because God, because God sent me. Come on, you're kidding what me. What does the scripture say? Are you, you know how many people, the, are you a student of the scripture? The scripture says, I am the Lord. You're falling short. I kill. You're really falling you're falling short and you know it and you're laughing now. I, I'm not laughing. I'm just You're laughing because you know there's a difference between kill and murder. Okay. That's a word. Think of kill. That's right. Think kill and murder, murder are two different well, words. What's the physical act? What's what the happened last life? week was murder. Deceased life. That is evil. Look here. What happened last week was evil. murder. Right. They intentionally Why killed. Was it not? To kill somebody What's is to defend. Right. To defend. If someone's going to come after me, I have the right to kill you. Well, if Does everybody you, agree? No. no. <laughs> What's the point? Look what it says here. This is Moses' law. It says, hey, this is what God is saying. Come on, come on Rabbi. All right. <laughs> God is saying this through Moses. See now that I, even he, I am he. The Lord's saying this. And there is no God with me. I kill. I make alive. I wound. I heal. Neither is there anyone that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven, and I say that I live forever, uh, forever. And if I wet my glittering sword, and my hand will take hold on judgment, I will make render vengeance to my enemies, and I will reward them that hate me. So God is the author of all evil. God is the author. Of God is the author of evil. God is not the author author of evil. He's the author of life. You see, you have your own scripture. God is not the author of evil. You're wrong. Well, uh, no. Is the prophet right? God is not the author of evil. Okay, You're wrong. God is not the author of evil. I'm going to read it to you. God is the author of life, and you know that. Look what it says. Look what it says. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create Who is the light? Consciousness. Christ Who is, is the, the light? light? Right. Okay. Truth. I form the and light. And the way. Okay. 
I create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all of these things. Now, you, you missed that. I, the Lord, create evil. I, the Lord, do all of these things. And the scripture says, woe to them. Who well, what say about God? What's, God, Lord, what's God's greatest gift to you? Life. No, it isn't. Christ is life. God's greatest gift to all of us is free will. The ability to choose from right or wrong. And what happened last week was a creation of evil. That was the ability to do wrong. Do we agree on that? Well, let me read what the prophets say about that. Okay. Uh, the gift of salvation there, brother? So what does salvation Romans mean? Six, what does salvation mean? All right, you're quoting the Bible. What does salvation mean? I want to hear it. Salvation. Means what? Soul. No, it doesn't. Means what? What does salvation mean? Deliverance. To be with God. To be with God. That's right. Not anything you're Which, saying. Yeah, it's it's what he's saying too. This man is right too. Look what it says here. Isaiah the prophet. Tie it up. I'm going to listen to you. Okay. What does this have to do with the World Trade I'm bombing? I'm going to read that right now. I'm going to listen we to you and come, shut up. We have come Let him listen. Let him talk. <laughs> we have come to the day of the new moon, where we are blowing the trumpet. Today is Rosh Hashanah. So here's what it he's says. He's a good man, by the way. He's a good person. And there shall be. Trying. This shall be upon every high mountain. And upon every high hill, that means upon every great nation, rivers, now look at for yourself so you don't think I'm deceiving you, rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter when the towns fall. And moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. What are those towers? Those towers we saw fall to. No, 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 no. The towers are the towers of Babylon. Uh -huh. And you know that. This is Babylon. And you know that. Don't tell me about these towers. Where is Babylon? No, the towers of Babylon that existed in the Bible. Where is Babylon? Come on. Right here. The this is no, you're changing Babylon. words. All right. Not with me, you won't. Okay. Because these people so, are not knowledgeable okay. of some of them. Not all of them. Here's what it says. You don't know any of them. Yeah, I know, don't, don't I? Don't, don't I? <laughs> don't <laughs> I? Brother, Revelation 18. It's a description of the final age. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen. It has become the habitation Babylon, of I just said, the Towers of Babylon. And Didn't I say that? The towers of Babylon? Who heard me say yes, the Towers of Babylon? Finish. Finish. Go ahead. Finish. Not the Towers of World Trade. Okay. Okay. Let's okay. be for real. This is the same Towers. Listen to me. <laughs> I'll teach you. <laughs> You'll be following me by the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk and all. Okay. Go this is a good break in the action. Good break in the action. It says... For all the nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication, Babylon. The kings of the earth have maxed the Right, the fortification, which was what? Which is religion and the political system. No, no, yes. it wasn't. No, come on, you're <laughs> laughing. It's religion I'm and politics. You now. Listen it's to me. It wasn't God. that. Okay. What was the fortification of the religion towers and politics. of Babylon? Men were building towers to the sky. Of Babylon. Don't, be... not of these towers. All right. No. All right. If you don't understand, you don't understand. No, I understand. You got to understand. Daniel 12 says the wise will understand. In that day, the wise will understand. And when they do, they will deliver themselves. That's salvation. Deliver themselves from the judgments that God is bringing upon the earth. Go ahead. That's all it's, it is. And it says, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. That's me talking to you. Come out of this system. That you be not partakers of her sins that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquity. The United States of America is founded in genocide. It's founded in slavery. It's founded on the backs of oppressed working people. The United States was built on the labor of slaves and child laborers. And now we've come to the 20th century, America has got itself built, and it imagines that it's now the righteous nation. But it says, but God hath remembered her iniquity. God has not forgotten the very first longhouse or the first teepee that was set on fire by American Congress. God has not forgotten the first person who came in shackles off a boat in Raleigh, North Carolina or someplace in the, in the South. Can I ask God, you a question now? Yes. Christopher Columbus, 
What did he bring to America? He brought devastation if you're a Native right. American. Disease. Okay, now I want to tell you what he brought. Christopher Columbus brought Christianity uh, to this country. Anti-Christianity. No, he didn't. He okay. brought Santa Maria. He brought the Blessed Mother, which is Jesus. Okay, mother. then why are the Indians so oppressed? The Indians? The Native Americans. The Indians. Wait, first, before you go to the Indians, you got to talk about the Minutemen. The Minutemen were patriots who fought for your freedom. Who murdered why would they other talk, people? Minutemen murdered people? They killed English. You... You have to be kidding me. Did they not? You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the minute man. I wouldn't be an American 1776. if it wasn't for the American. I'd be a child of God. You're, a, the, you're, not, you're not really, you're not focusing here. But do you do not? <laughs> not you would not, you're not permitted to talk for the rest of the night. <laughs> Until you learn. <laughs> learn from me first. <laughs> oh, my God. Says, uh, now look here. The Apostle Peter is saying this. Unto you, therefore, which believe, Christ is precious, but to them be disobedient, the stone which the you see Christ is precious. Right here, he. He is precious. That's he Christ. He is precious. That's, That's Christ. Christ. All, right, all right, come on, let's not change the okay. word. But unto them that be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same has become the head of the corner. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Now, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We were a holy nation before America was founded. We were already a holy people. We were a nation. A, a, we a, weren't a, here yet. We were pilgrims in the earth. What do you mean, a holy nation before America founded? The United States was founded in 1776. No, it wasn't you, founded then. It was it was established in 1609. That was, Jamestown, Virginia. What are you talking that was about? Not the birth of the American nation. That was the birth sure of American culture. Sure, it was. Culture. It was the beginning of America. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll <laughs> concede. This guy. I'll concede. I'll concede. <laughs> But we no are conceived. You better conceive uh, because you're pulling a lot of hogwash here tonight. Wait, what? I, I remember distinctly that in 1776, somebody got together and built the Constitution or something like that. Yeah, but I remember 1609 in Jamestown, Virginia. Right. You're not filming me, aren't you? Because you don't want this on film. <laughs> you notice that? Go ahead. It says here, we are a peculiar people, a holy nation that we should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness, which in time past were not a people, but now we are a people of God. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts that war against us all, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak of you as evildoers, they may see your good works. Now look what it says. Submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. The revolutionists did not do that. They did not submit themselves, it says, okay. whether it be the king right. or supreme, or unto governors, or unto them which are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. For this is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to shame the ignorance of silent men. The colonists broke these commandments of Christ. They did not submit themselves unto the ordinance of the king, which means the king, the son of darkness that God had raised in the earth for the punishment of evildoers. And so, instead of obeying Christ, walking in the pathways of Christ, these in the name of Christ took up guns, and they slew their brothers. They killed English, and in doing so, they took over this continent, and they cleared it out of Native Americans. They drove the English out, they drove the French out with violence, with guns, all contrary to the teachings of Christ. And so this is not the religion of Christ that conquered America, it's Antichrist that conquered America. And we are now laboring in the darkness of this age, and God wants us to awaken to the fact that God is now judging us. God is now getting ready to deliver us out of the darkness in which we labor. And the system of Antichrist, the reason we think it's righteous is because it comes subtly. It comes using the words of the scripture. It uses words like freedom. It uses words like righteousness. It uses words like justice, but it turns it around and gives it a dark twist so that it confuses the mind that is not versed in the ideas of Christ. Scripture says, if Christ sets you free, we are free indeed. I didn't need George Washington to set me free. I was already free. I don't need Thomas Jefferson to set me free. I was already a free man. But you when, were born in the 1700s. Exactly, but if I lived then, I was already a free man. But when you I subjected them, that, though, if you but lived, those yeah. who lived then, when they subjected themselves to this nation that was what created, about they became slaves. What about Thanksgiving? The first I Thanksgiving. Do not, 
Oh, I do not observe Thanksgiving because I would be observing well, you don't genocide. Observe it. it was observed in the 1600s. It was observed by thanked, Americans. Who do they thank but God? Children. They thank of God. Of course, which God? You know, God's many and Lord's which many. Which God? Come the on. The God of America is a God of violence. It's Come a God on. of no, retribution. No, no, you're stretching the truth. Okay. <laughs> and you, you know, know you what are. God they serve. You know you are. They, do they serve the God of life? No, and how come they you kill? know you are. Let's do they go. serve the God of justice? If they serve the God of justice, then why is there injustice? If they serve the God of truth, why are they laboring under a lie? Go ahead, continue. I want to hear more. All right, so there are many gods. We serving the God, the Father of all spirits, the God who is alive in the sum of all unfolding natural events. What we saw Tuesday, and though I hate to say it and I mourn for it, was the beginning of the judgments of Babylon. And regardless of how you resist that, the truth will bear itself the victory. And so if none of these things are true, you are right, and I am wrong, and none of no, these things will unfold. Wrong. Well, I will be. I'll be wrong. It's if it your interpretation happen. of the Bible. That's exactly right. But if these things do unfold, you will come back to me and say, "Why, well, you little old man, I'm glad that you told me, because now I'm not trapped anymore. I'm awake now. Well, what but did you tell me? I'm telling you, don't get entangled in the entangled system in as the what wars. System? In the American political socio-economic military order which I God have is, the, I vote like anybody well, else then come and, out and, and stop voting and the voters and the politicians make all the decisions and well then why vote whatever them? happens is going to happen based on Washington based on God God is who sets up kings and drops kings it has nothing to do with man it's in a delusion that we're living in the apostles the, no, in other words you're saying Bush has nothing to do with what's going to happen of course he does he's the then object of God's wrath he's the object of God's wrath right he and the whole cartel of his fathers, all of these warriors and capitalists and secret usurpers of the right. So what are you trying to do? What I'm trying to do is wake each other up and wake, wake each other up, up to what? To the fact that God is getting ready to judge America and has already begun. But don't you know that Judgment Day is an individual thing? It's Whether exactly, what you do on earth? Exactly. It's individual. It starts right. in the hearts of It's everybody. not about people. It, no, you it, know it, that. But now it's coming in a collected way. Now well, it's like coming in what? a great historical you, way. He will judge only you and her and her and me. But now this nation. something God will never judge. God is way We judge ourselves. Right. But it doesn't Christ mean. never existed. It's just a conscientiousness. There you go. To bring us up to a higher level. There you go. Just so that no other religion should exist either. Religion is what brought on this. People with this fervor to fight a holy war is a war of jealousy. Yes. Because we built a great country. Middle East has not built anything. You see products coming from all over the world. Okay, but let me just say one thing. The scripture says, that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. You say we built a great nation. We built the means to oppress all other nations of the world. We built the engine of industrial and capitalist might that is now moving itself out into the world, trying to create the world in its own image. And it is that that God will not stand for. God dwells in the sum of all human and natural events. And whatever you see happening, that is God. We can, hold, we can blind ourselves to it, but the reality is whatever happens is what God is doing. Let me ask you a question. Last week, after the trade towers was exploded, lots of people were turned away from going there and taking the rubble out and saving the victims. Why was that? Let me ask you that. Everybody was in trauma. Some people... No, 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 no. I'm asking you a question. Why were people turned away? You don't know. Because our first Does anybody right know? Why were they turned away? Why were people turned oh, away? By the authorities? Yeah. Well, they were afraid of looting and gas. They were afraid of uh, exactly. interference. There's a lot of money there. Okay. And that's what they were protecting. They were protecting I, money. I agree with you. If agree with everybody you. here and if everybody in the city was to take a piece, one at a time, maybe it would have saved a lot of people. But there's a lot of money there. And they don't want you or me or you to get involved with that. Well, the truth is, the I don't want that money. Cash. I mean, the World Trade Center wasn't built of green That cash? cash? It's all electronic. You have any registers were there? How many restaurants and businesses? It was, there's tons of cash there. Oh, sure. All right, so. All right. I thought you meant. I thought all right. You meant right. We, 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 all right. Thank we, you for clarifying. None of us covet that cash. Yeah, really. Really. The, the love of that cash is the root of all evil. Where does Christ fit in the picture? Christ is the jewelry and gold. Christ dwells in you. It's the spirit of know? Christ in you. 